Hi, and welcome to Ask the Rules Guy. I'm Chris Welsh, and thanks for joining us here. We've got a very special segment today. I've been looking forward to this for a long, long time. We put an idea together a while back about the Broadcaster's Rules Challenge. And the question is this, do you know more than your local favorite broadcast announcer? Maybe it's a color guy. Maybe it's a play-by-play guy. Well, I know you don't know more than umpires, and I'm going to bring in a major league umpire right now uh, and uh, John Hirschbeck. Uh, John is up here in the upper right-hand part of your screen. And, John, welcome to the program. Um, I know that you know the rules, even though you're a retired umpire, 34 years uh, as an umpire in the major leagues, many more years as an amateur umpire, minor league umpire. Well, we first got together back in the days of the Columbus Clippers, uh, Welcome to the show here. Uh, glad Thank to have you. you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. I know this will be a lot of fun. We're also joined by Rex the Wonder Dog Huddler. Uh, Rex, on his second different stint as a color analyst, you were 10 or 11 years there with the Angels, Rex. Uh, now you're with the Kansas City Royals. You had over 1,000 games in the major leagues, 56 home runs. Uh, and going way, way back, I mean, you and I were teammates in the minor leagues with the Yankees. That's, that's back in the Stone Age, of course. Well, uh, welcome, Rex. <laughs> Oh, buddy. Hey, thank you. And, and 55 of those homers all scraped the back of the wall, by the way. And, and I can tell you that that the, the games I got in, most of those were, were in the National League when I went into pinch hit. But I rode the pine for nine and made a pretty good living. Well, you did a great job. And uh, Bill the Rock Schroeder, a welcome. We see each other all the time, Rock, when the Brewers and the Reds play in the National League Central Division. Uh, you had over 60 home runs, I think, in the major leagues. Uh, uh, you've been doing this for a long, long time here as a color analyst for the Brewers. Yeah, 26 years, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we get year 26 in this year. I think it's uh, they're, they're going to work something out. But, yeah, I tied Roger Maris is what I did. I had 61 <laughs> career home runs. Roger had 61 home runs in one season, so that's my claim to fame. I tied Roger Maris. Yeah, I, I've got to ask you before we get going here. I, I understand that there was a time when you were in a ball game facing Charlie Liebrandt, mm-hmm. and Charlie Liebrandt had a no hitter going, and you broke up the no hitter with a a bunt single. Tell us about that. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. First thing we discuss. I had, I had a, a police escort out of that stadium in Kansas City. You know, <laughs> your, your spot there. You know, Kevin Seitzer was a third baseman. Charlie, so Charlie Liebrand's throwing a no hitter. It's like the seventh inning, I think it is. The, the score is like six to nothing. And, and here's the backstory to that. About a week before, uh, Teddy Higuera had a no hitter against the same Kansas City Royals. And never got out of the sixth or seventh inning. They started just getting hits after hit and hit. They took them out. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to drop down a bunt here. I mean, seventh inning, kind of shady. But back in those days, I didn't care. I took a hit when I could get it. So I'm looking down at Kevin Seitzer, who's playing third. He's actually got his heels on the back line. You know, Kansas City had the after turf. (laughs) He had the back line. I dropped down the worst bunt. It was the best contact I made all day. And finally, and beat it out. He kind of bobbled it. They gave me a hit. The only hit of the game. I got to tell you, I, I was rooting for somebody to get another hit. So next day I get to the ballpark, I change uniform tops with Dale Swaim. So Dale Swaim is wearing a Schroeder jersey. I was wearing a Swaim jersey. And I, I couldn't, couldn't, you can't imagine the things that Dale was hearing that day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was good stuff right funny. there. And I told Seitzer, he came over to the Brewers after a few years, and he, he kind of asked me about that. I said, if you played third baseman like a man, he would have had a no-hitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wonder Dog, did you ever do that? Did you ever break up a no-hitter with a bunt? No, because you know what? I, I, I said, you know what? I, I can I can get my own hit. Now, I remember I was in two no-hitters, one perfect game, Kenny Rogers in Arlington, Texas. Uh, uh, and, you know, I love lefties. So, so I, I had all the confidence in the world I could, I could get a base hit by swinging the bat. And I knew the rules. You know, I was a 10-year minor leaguer, and, and you get to the majors after 10 years of the minors, you've got a pretty good idea about the nuances of the game, uh, the unwritten rules, and things like that. So I remember in Fernando's only no-hitter, when I was playing with the Cardinals, uh, Mike Sosha was, was behind the plate, and Jerry Lane was the umpire that night. And Fernando wasn't in his prime, but he still had the screwball. He still had the screwball working and didn't help that Jerry was giving him this much, man. Jerry was giving him this much on the outside part of the plate. 
So I come up for my third at bat. Now it's the, the crowd in Dodger Stadiums. You know, they're getting worked up. And I, I made eye contact with Mike Sosha because Sosha was thinking along my lines. He, I, I was a bunter and I could run. So <laughs> it would have been easy for me to, to put a bunt down and, and get a base hit. And Sosha's eyeballing me. He's looking at me from the crouch. And I looked at him and I go, don't worry. I'm not going to bunt because he knew exact, exactly that, what I was thinking. So it took the pressure off of him and me and just another rollover ground ball uh, to the shortstop, man. So <laughs> Fernando got us in there. But, but I, I, uh, I, did, I didn't want to do that because I, I didn't want to cause no trouble. You know, not to be Mr. Negative, but we talk about this because we were back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. But nowadays, I don't think they'd, they'd say, well, he just got his, his way of getting a hit. Not a big thing. It's the game has changed that much. Yeah, I, t- I took a lot of heat for that uh, from my own teammates and, and Kansas City. You know, Frank White, right after the game, said, I don't blame him. I, you know, it's okay. But we got went into Kansas City later that year. Charlie Liebrandt's on the mound. We beat him 3-1, to one and I hit a three-run homer. So Charlie Liebrandt still to this day, I'm sure, hates me. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> All right, are you, and John, you've had a lot of memorable games in your Major League umpiring career. One that comes to mind as a Reds fan, I was there to watch that game when Roy yeah. Halladay had that no-no uh, in the NLDS. But there was a situation, I think there was one walk in the game. Jay Bruce walked on a 3-2 pitch, as I remember. But at the very end of the game, uh, towards the end of the game, uh, Brandon Phillips, I think, I don't know whether he dropped the bunt down or whether it was a swinging bunt, but you almost had to make a runner's interference call in that game uh, because he was running clearly not in the runner's lane, but in fair territory. Take us through that a little bit. You know what? It was the last out of the game. And it was, I I believe it was a little tapper out in front of the mound. So in my mind, I'm going up the line watching, and I said, if he hits him with that ball, I got to call this. And he threw it over the first baseman, second, whoever covering the bag stretched and got it. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. I don't have to. But I was going to make the call. In my mind, it, you know, things happen so fast. But I was ready to make the call because it was a definite out of the baseline. And that was the same type of play that happened in last year's World Series with Trey Turner going down the first baseline. Yeah, it was. Yes, it was. That was fun right. game. That was the only time in, in 41 years, counting the minor leagues, I've been on the field for a lot of no hitters, a lot of perfect games. I'm talking like up eight, nine, but that was the only time I was ever behind the plate for a no hitter. <sighs> All right. Now I've got one question before we get into the rules game. Uh, it's going to be a categories game. John, do you feel like you need to have the power to eject either of these contestants if they get out of line? Oh, trust me, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have that power. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, I got a I button right here in you. front of me. I just hey, highlight John. Rex, and boom, he's gone. John, 10 years, uh, you know, in the majors or, or a little bit more, they say, whatever, never got tossed. No. Uh, and, and I was very fortunate, but because but I had a lot of respect for umpires. I only got tossed one time, and it was a spring training game. And I, I got called out on a pitch outside Marty Foster. And uh, and as I as I went back to the diet, never said a word. I just drug the dirt with from my foot across the plate and and covered the plate in dirt and dirt. Didn't say a word, and he kicked me out. And you know you got to do that. You, you can't. Yeah. But I never got kicked out in a big league game. I still, to this day, remember you coming up to hit in Anaheim, different places, Baltimore, and just you were one of the happiest, glad to be there people, thanking God every minute of every day I've ever come across. Exactly. Genuine, genuine, genuine. Oh, yeah. thank you, John. You're one of my favorite umpires of all time, man. Yeah, okay. good guy. Thank you. All right, well, let's get to playing the game right here, guys. Here's the game board, as you see. We're going to start uh, with the elder statesman here, Rock Schroeder. Um, okay. Billy, what you want to do right here is kind of like Jeopardy game. All you do is pick a question, a batter, a column, uh, I mean, a column and a number, and we'll go right to that. If you get it right, you'll get to answer another one. If you get it wrong, we'll go right over to Rex, and we'll take turns back and forth. So where do you go first on the board? I'll go batter for 100. Batter for 100 is a swing attempt is when the head of the bat goes beyond the front of the plate. False. Correct. All right, way to go, Bill. All right, where are we going next? 200, batter for 200. Batter for 200. 
A batter who is outside of the batter's box is called out if, A, he swings at a pitch, B, his bat makes contact with a pitch, D, uh, C, he does not get back into the box legally before the pitch is made. Hmm. It's kind of a confusing uh, C right there. Yeah. He, oh, he's called out, I, I'm going to say B. B? Correcto. How about that? All right. I see John Hirschbeck nodding, and, and you're that's, doing a pretty good job. Right. Billy, that's good. But the only thing that probably isn't in this question that should be is that when he makes contact with the ball, his foot has to be entirely on the ground outside the box. Entirely. There, it's okay, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, good enough. All right, Rex, now we move to you. Uh, you pick a box. Hey, I will go with uh, base runner for 100. Base runner for 100. If two runners end up on the same base at the same time, the trailing runner is always out. False. B. Uh, correct. correct. All right. How does that change, John? It hasn't changed. It's just that, uh, you know, when two guys are on the bag, it's not a, if it's a force situation and you step on the bag first, then, and th then you have guys stepping off, but it's just a matter of which order you tag them in if it's a force situation. And if what it's not, the previous runner's entitled to the bag. What is your advice to a, a young player or a coach who's coaching an amateur team to when you see two guys on the base, what should the defender do? Uh, touch the lead runner first. Okay. Correct? All right. All right. Good enough. We move on. Rex, you're bored again. Hey, thank you. I will go with uh, Fielder for 100. With, I'm sorry, say again? Fielder. I'll, I'll fielder for field. 100. Okay, well, I figured that. And a Baltimore chop is a high-bouncing ball in the infield, a post-game treat, a term originally <laughs> coined by Earl Weaver to describe a three-run homer, or a chant by Orioles fans. <laughs> Oh, I got to play a, a little bit for Earl. How about a a a high bouncing ball in the infield? <laughs> All right, you got it. You're on a roll, and we're going back to to Billy. <laughs> Billy, you're bored. All right, let's go pitcher for a hundred. Pitcher for a hundred. All right, a pitcher may from the set position do which of the following: deliver a pitch to the plate, throw to an occupied base, fake a throw to second, or all of the above. I say D. That all of the above? All of the above. Correcto. Boy, you guys are making this thing look easy. I'll tell you good. what. Yeah, and, really. Hey, hey, John, when are they going to when are they going to el eliminate a fake throw to second? You can't fake throw to any other base. I, you know what? And and I thought a couple of years ago, 5 6 years ago when they eliminated the step off to third and over to first that they would do it then, but they haven't yet. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. it's somewhere yeah. in the end of coming. All right, Billy Schroeder, you're bored again. All right, let's go uh, fielder for 200. Fielder for 200. The keystone position is A, the shortstop, B, the second baseman, C, either shortstop or second baseman, or D, center fielder. I'm going to say C. C. All right, I see Rex nodding his head, and that is – Wrong. That'll be minus two hundred for you, Billy. It's only the second baseman. No, so, I didn't yeah. know that. We we all I learn something every it. day. Rex, back to you. It's your board. <clears throat> Way to go. How about how about let's let's try batter for three hundred. Batter for three hundred. If a batter swings at a pitch and the pitch hits the batter on the hands and then bounces into fair territory. It is A, a fair ball since he swung at the pitch and it's in play. B, foul ball, dead ball, batter not awarded first base. C, hit by pitch, batter is awarded first, or a do-over. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no do-overs, so I'm going to go with A, it's a fair ball since he swung and put the ball in play. All right. It is not A, it is B. John, t t take us into this one, will you? Sure. Oh. sure. Once he once he offers at the pitch, it, hitting him in the hands would be no different than if it hit him on the elbow. Because let's say he takes a full swing and he's, he hits him in the elbow. So it's it's no different. 
It's just a swing. The ball is dead. And play on. Is that reviewable? Oh, yeah, that would be reviewable. Yeah, it's got to be. Because they're going to argue that it hit the bat, not his hands. Right. Yeah. Rex, wouldn't you rather argue that than uh, go to review? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I remember I got hit. I didn't get hit one time, but the ball came in close, and it and it uh, scared you. Deflected, it deflected off my bat, and Richie Garcia was behind the plate, and I was a rookie for the Yankees, and and I was, uh, but I still was pretty savvy because you know I was a long time minor leaguer, and I, I so I acted like it, it. I shook my hand and act like it hit me, and he goes, "Let me." He goes, "Let me see," and I showed him, and he goes, "Take the glove off," and so I I took my glove off, and 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 I was thinking to myself as I'm doing it because I'm really it's a lie. I know it didn't hit me. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going. Oh, I took, I took off my glove and I showed him my hand, and he went, "Okay, take your base." And I was like, oh. <laughs> "I get back to, I get back to the dugout, and Don Baylor and Ken Griffey are going, hey, kid, dude, you better hope like heck he never, he never finds out that you lied. If he, if he finds that out, you're in big trouble, man." I couldn't <laughs> agree like, more. Like, I couldn't agree it more. Like, it sounds yeah. like it's almost as bad as bunning to break up a no hitter. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I had guys, Chris, throughout my career, and, and, you know, not a lot, but guys that I knew well, and um, I could say to them, did that hit you? And I knew I was going to get the truth. Just real calmly step out like I'm looking at them, or did that hit you? And I'd go with what they told me. John McDonald. John McDonald is one of them. Huh. Yeah. All right, well, let's go back to the board. And since you got that wrong, Billy Schroeder, this one will belong to you. Okay. Um, uh, all right. Let's go pitcher for 200. Pitcher for 200. With runner or runners on base, a pitcher in the full windup position must step off with his stride foot, pivot foot, or either foot. Pivot foot. Either foot? No. E Pivot, oh, pivot foot, pivot foot, okay. All right, you're correct. That's a pretty easy one right there. I, you know, for a guy that made enough trips to the mound, you probably uh, coached a yeah. few pitchers on that before. But I never I never did go out to the mound. I went out to the mound once with Pete Vukovic out there. I got halfway out there, and he said, the only thing you don't – the only thing you know about pitching is you can't hit it. Get back behind home plate. <laughs> <laughs> I never went out to the mound again with him out there. Oh, man. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> All right, Billy, you're still your board. All right, oh, let's go batter for 400. Batter for 400. And it is the bonus question. You can risk whatever you have. You've got 400, or you've got 600 to your credit. Uh, go ahead and risk whatever you want. All of it. All of it. All right, with a runner on base. If a catcher's throw back to the pitcher accidentally hits the batter's bat, A, the batter is called for interference, B, live ball, play it as nothing has happened, C, all runners advance one base, or D, dead ball, all runners return to the previous base? Hmm. Uh, that's a tough one. No, the batter yeah. is in the batter's box, and it just incident, it's accidentally hits the batter's bat. Correct. There's no intent. Right. No intent. Okay. I got to believe that's a live ball. All right. We'll check that out. Correct. And he wow. doubles his amount. Good going right there. Good going, Bill. I'll tell you what, Billy, you're, you're, you're on a roll right here, but the rest of it's going to have to wait a little bit. We're going to take a quick break, and we come back, we'll finish up. With Ask the Rules Guy Broadcasters Rules Challenge right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Ask the Rules Guy. We've got the Broadcaster Rules Challenge going on. And of course, our umpire in this particular episode is a longtime Major League umpire. Great guy. John and I, uh, we've known each other, I guess, John, since going back to the minor leagues. I hate to go back that far. Uh, but now that you're. Chris. Yeah, 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 for sure. But, you know, you, you've been retired for several years now, but uh, the work and the good work continues for you. You have uh, 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 developed your own foundation uh, to help the cause of trying to find a cure for ALD. Uh, will you take us through a little bit and describe uh, what uh, Magic of Michael is all about? I sure will. Thank you very much, first of all. Um, Michael suddenly passed away uh, April 8th of 2014. And um, 
it was, uh, of course, devastating. Uh, friends of his came to us a few months later and they said, hey, we'd really like to do something in Michael's memory. And they were talking about a golf outing. So long story short, we ended up creating The Magic of Michael. Um, and we have dedicated all the everything. We have an event each year, a golf outing and then a dinner. Our first person that we honored was Joe Torrey. We've had some really great, fun, entertaining names. And, and the golf outing is a great success also. So the money that we've raised, um, we work with Akron Children's Hospital, and we do things for children in Northeast Ohio, and everything from children with disabilities, um, handicaps, and um, just even inner city children that have, don't have the right things. We, we've done everything from uh, dogs, companion dogs for children, to uh, computers, for inner city children. Um, and uh, even at Christmas, we have Santa Claus and the Children's Hospital gives us usually a list of about uh, seven kids that are terminal and we buy for them and all their families. So we make it a big Christmas at Akron Children's Hospital. So um, we've done a lot in the air, in the community and it's just, it's a good thing to keep Michael's, it's a great thing to keep Michael's memory alive. And, um, and that's what we're doing. Well, John, it's great work, and uh, uh, God bless you for doing that work, and good luck to you in the future. Anybody who wants to be involved in that can simply follow the directions that are on that panel that you see, and uh, I hope that uh, we do a little help for your cause, uh, certainly uh, a great Thank cause you. that you've got going. Thank you very much. What a great opportunity it is to have children at all. I got four of them, and my firstborn son, um, he was born with what the world calls Down syndrome, but we've had him for 23 years now, and what we know is that he does not have Down syndrome. He has Up syndrome. He and other individuals that have an extra chromosome, it slows their metabolism down, it slows their speaking, uh, and, and, and mentally delays them. And so we didn't realize that, but but at the time, but they're all happy. They they're all very happy. Uh, they 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 have unconditional love in their hearts for others. So it's a lot of fun to share him. So when Jennifer when he he was born, Jennifer and I, my wife, we said, "Oh man, we just signed up with the Philadelphia Phillies, and we thought, hey, why don't we just we we've been doing so many other charity work, different things around, but we said, hey, why don't we just do some work for Down syndrome and and raise awareness." So we uh, organized Team Up for Down Syndrome, and that's the name we use up. And so we have we held golf tournaments. Um, we've had I had All Star parties when when I was with the Angels. We would um, you know during the All Star break or during the All Star game, we would invite people to come and they would watch the game from the from the seats there at the stadium. And we would have a big auction and stuff like that. And we we did that for 11, 12 years. And now. What we do is the Royals give us a certain amount of tickets and we sell those to families, all families with disabilities. And they come to the ballpark at Kauffman Stadium for a special day at the K. And what we do with the funds is, is we give them to uh, organizations that, that uh, have Down syndrome kids and adults that are in their organizations, housing, job training uh, stuff, um, all, all kinds of, of opportunities like that. And we just give to all now. Now it's more about all disabilities and we support the parents. So in 23 years, we've evolved in time. And now, you know, any kind of disability to me is an ability. Well, that is great work you're doing, Rex. Congratulations on that. And of course, anybody who wants to get involved in Team Up for Down Syndrome, or you just contact Rex or his people at the, uh, the address that you see there, log on his website and do what you can to help out. Thank you, Rex. Thank you. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready to play a little bit more? We've only got about yeah. 10 minutes left in our program. We may not get through the entire uh, number of questions, but uh, <laughs> as I remember, let's go ahead to, uh, to Rex and give you the, give you the board right now, Rex. What do you pick? All right. I got to get back to, to, uh, to average, to, to level ground. So how about lucky bounce for 300? Lucky bounce for 300. 
Uh, a runner at first base is stealing on the pitch. The batter swings, and in his follow-through, the bat just nicks the catcher's mask, but not enough to alter the throw to second base. The runner is safe. What should the umpire do? Nothing. Since the contact was incidental, the ball remains alive. B, the ball is dead, but the runner remains at second base. C, the batter is out, the runner returns to first base. Or D, a do-over. Hmm. Uh, I am going to say B, ball is dead, but the runner remains at second. Okay, ball is dead, but the runner remains a second. Let's see if that's the right answer. It is absolutely not. It is a do-over. Yeah, there's your do-over. John, explain that. Okay, because the interference was unintentional, you wait and see. If the catcher throws the runner out, the out stands. Since the runner was safe, you bring it back, bring the runner back to first, and the pitch, of course, counts, but you start from there. So he swung and missed. It's unintentional, but you're not going to penalize the catcher for throwing the guy out. But in this case, he was not out, so he goes back to first. And it's one of those rare cases in baseball where you actually do have a do-over. Yeah. Wow, I didn't didn't realize that. Thank you. All right. (laughs) Sorry. When we're in the booth trying to break that down, we wait to see what the umpires are saying. Exactly. Thank you, Rock. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) All right, Rock, you're bored. All right, let's go. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I used to think that I knew official scoring pretty well, but I, I really don't. Um, it, it's not something I concentrate on much. So let's let's try official scoring for 100. Official scoring for 100. When deciding a scoring play, the official score gives the benefit of the doubt to A, the umpire, B, the batter, C, the fielder, or D, the pitcher. Hmm. Gives the benefit of the doubt. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. But I'm gonna well, I, I think what they mean is that if you have a situation where it, you have to decide whether it's a hit or an error, who do you give the benefit of the doubt to? Well, if you're at Wrigley Field, do you give it to the you give a hit to the Cubs hitter? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, let, let's go with that one then. We'll go. <laughs> we'll go with the batter B. <laughs> I'm not sure. And it is the batter. And I, I left out Cubs batter, but you're right about that, too. Uh, I remember we were in Wrigley Field. This was a few years ago, and this is when Sammy Sosa was still playing. And he hit a one-hopper to our third baseman, fielded it, took a crow hop, threw it into the stands, and it gave him a hit. So that's why I say that. So. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. You know, for- I mentioned this. There's nine. He was an entertainer. Hey, hey, Rock, I used to love it, I, you know, going in there. And I played five years in the National League for a, a couple different teams. But when he would take the field and, and sprint from the dugout yeah. all the way to right field and swing himself around the center on a dead sprint, I thought that was the greatest thing ever. Yep. That, that that entertained the crowd. The, the crowd went crazy, they and did so did crazy. I. And I'm on the other team. He had flair, didn't he? Yes. Oh, <laughs> He yeah. was an entertainer, and it was he a lot backed of fun, it up, man. too. That was a good time. All right, back to the board. Rex, you're the man. Not right now. I'm minus 600, man. I got to start getting back in there. I got to get one. How, let's stay with official scoring for 200, please. Official scoring for 200, and Rex has the board. Let's see. A pitcher leaves the game with an injury on a 2-2 count. The relief pitcher comes in and then walks the batter. The walk is credited to the first pitcher, the relief pitcher, or credited as a team base on balls? I'm going to say it's the first pitcher. The first pitcher. Oh, not quite. (laughs) All right. It it, it goes to relief pitcher. There actually is a chart. You know, John Hirschbeck, I know that you have not probably studied the scoring part of the rule book, but in the official rule book, and I think, Rock, you've got a copy there close to you, Section 9 covers the official scores. So they have – you know, their own set of rules that a lot of people don't even read, but that's part of it. Uh, they have a chart in there as to when the the first pitcher leaves and the second pitcher comes in as to who gets credited for what. And uh, in this case, uh, the relief pitcher gets charged with the base on balls. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, Rock. Stay hot. Up to you, buddy. 
All right, let's go. Uh, let's go official scoring for three hundred. Since you oh. want to rack our brains, and another bonus time for you, Rock. Jesus, let's go. <laughs> I'm not confident. Two fifty. Two fifty. All right. Nice stinking. <laughs> All right, when catcher's interference occurs, the batter is credited with a base hit. The batter is charged with a time at bat, no hit. A catcher is charged with an error, and the batter is not charged with a time at bat, or a team error is charged to the defensive team. Well, that'll be C. C? Well, you know, we're, we, you're lucking out by getting all these that are catching-related, and you know every one of those. Yeah. John, we're, we're not even going to ask you this since it's a scoring rule. Please don't. Never looked at section nine in my life. <laughs> Never. All right, Rock. We're down to our last three questions. Pick one of them. All right, let's go f- official scoring for 400. Official Maybe scoring. Something. All right. When two defenders collide trying to make a routine defensive play, A, the player who touches the ball receives the error, B, the player is always ruled a base hit, C, official scorer decides who should receive the error if one is charged, and D, it is charged as a team error. Hmm. I'm going to go C. C? Boy, you are on some kind of roll. That's correct for 400 right there. We go back now to Rex. You got the board, my man. Wonder Dog, time to make a little comeback. We got to go 500 for base running, right? We're running. It's getting late. Base <laughs> running for 500. All right, Rex. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Take your time on this one now, all right? Runner two is on second base, or runner one is on first base. The third baseman is attempting to field a ground ball on the shortstop, who's also positioned behind him, like in a shift, is there to make the play. The third baseman misses the ground ball, which deflects off his glove, and it hits the runner, runner two, coming from second to third. The shortstop's right there waiting to make the play. But all runners end up safe having moved up one base. Here are the questions to answers. A, the play stands since the ground ball was deflected. Runner two is not guilty of interference. B, interference on runner two since the shortstop was in position to make the play. He is out and runner first goes to second. The batter runner goes to first. Or interference on the runner from second to third. He's out. And since a double play was possible, the batter runner is also out. Wow, John, man. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what we're going to do, Rex, in this particular case. Considering your point total, we're going to allow you one lifetime, one lifeline call to an umpire <laughs> of your choice. <laughs> All right? <laughs> where's, where's Ted Barrett when I need him? <laughs> How about John Hirschbeck? I got yeah. Hey John, yeah, John would be a good resource. Um, I've, I've seen stuff like this happen before, but like Rock says, as a broadcaster, we usually wait. If we don't, I'll look at my my uh, play by play guy. We'll kind of wait and see what the umpires come up with before we go out on the line and, and say, "Well, I think it." But it, but I think it's a the play stands. Good job. That's what I would think. Good job. Chris, why are you looking there at it? There it is. No, he, yeah. he, he's exactly right. Plus 500 right there. Good job. I, 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 was, wait, I was waiting for you, John, to explain it ahead of time and give him a, give him the answer. But uh, good job there. Well, once he picked A, I, I still thought there's no reason for me to say anything. Yeah. Why no, don't you get into um, that one a little bit about a deflected ball? If, if, it's, um, if it was untouched, the big thing is be, the whole thing here is because it was touched. That leaves right. the second baseman as long as he does nothing – intentional it hits him he's okay if it was untouched by the third baseman and the shortstop's in position and now it hits the runner then it would be interference so the big thing is the touch by an infielder so no, no point is that ball dead at any point once it hits the runner after it goes off the glove of the third baseman right no matter where it ends up guys keep running yes uh-huh. it is not dead well great stuff right there guys i think we're out of time for our Ask the Rules Guy Broadcaster Rules Edition. Uh, our rules challenge today was really fun. It was great having you over here on board on this. And uh, I'll tell you, it, it 
This is the kind of thing that I think people like to hear. They want to hear about the rules. I know there's a broadcaster. Uh, the reason I started Baseball Rules Academy, this website, is because I didn't know the rules. I thought I did by being a player, and then something quirky happens on the field, and then our viewers expect us to come back after a 90-second break and have the answer, and right. uh, it, it's hard to find the answer. And, I've always uh, wondered, what do you guys do in that situation? Because that has to be, um, you know, you're trying to – you got three minutes or two two minutes to figure it out. What do you do? Well, you just rely on your instincts. And, you know, like I said, I, I kind of try and read the rule book once a year at least on a plane or whatever, go through it. Sometimes this stuff goes right through you, but uh, you never know what's going to happen. You know, back in 2013, we had a play against the Chicago Cubs, and I think it was written about uh, by Jason Stark recently. So, you know, Segura and somebody else was on second base at Miller Park. Um, they tagged both of them. Segura was the lead runner. He thought he was out. He started back to the dugout at Miller Park toward first base, realized he wasn't out, and ended up the next play at first base. He started the play at second. And in the beginning of the next play, he started at first, and the umpires and, and everybody was confused about the whole thing. Later on, about three days later, the league said that he eliminated, he lost his opportunity to run the bases, should have been out. So Gave up that was the craziest right. thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah called out once you abandon the base thinking you're yeah. out so yeah. You, yeah you know John, I know the, the, the listeners and the viewers at home they expect uh, us analysts to be experts in baseball mm. yeah. and I like to tell people that we got a pretty good idea but where there are there are no experts in baseball the game is too complex it's too too, too complicated no one's ever been able to figure the game out so thankfully we have smart play-by-play -play guys Ryan Lefevre his baseball <laughs> IQ is way up here and, and also everything else. He So I kind of, you know, he has a, book, a rule book with him. We check the book, and then we keep an eye on the field, and we watch the umpires, and we read lips. I read lips a lot because they, they, they come in close to the umpires and when they're talking, and so then we can kind of try to figure it out. But, man, I, I wish that – well, she, I love what you're doing, but I wish as a player I would have um, – known more rules because I just played baseball and let them tell me what was wrong and wasn't what wasn't right. So I, yeah. I, I think that I think that uh, uh, a lot of players just play the game. They don't have a clue about the rules. But as a broadcaster, we got to have a have a good idea. But well, yeah. she, thanks so much for getting this going. Well, the yeah. one good thing that starting this year, well, when this year starts, is that the uh, the crew chief is going to have to get on the microphone like they do in the NFL, and he's going to have to explain things. So you guys will have wonderful. That's oh. a great idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, and, and thank you for you guys too, John Hirschback. As always, great to see, visit with you again. Uh, we Mike, go Mike. back a long time. Thank you guys too. It's been a long. Rex time. And, and Rock, uh, thanks for joining us here today. It was really a lot of fun. Maybe we'll get a chance to do it again sometime. Hey, Rex, yeah. when you came down, I always told you give your son a hug for me. <laughs> Yeah, great uh, hey, great John, good talking baseball. John, great you. seeing you guys and uh, Chris. Bye, Bill. Yeah, good work on that website. All thank best. you, guys. Thanks for joining us on Ask the Rules Guy, the Broadcaster Rules Challenge. Had a great time with Bill Rock Schroeder and the Wonder Dog, Rex Hudler, and of course, John Hirschbeck, the Major League Umpire. Uh, had a great time. Learned a lot. I hope you did too. Don't forget to join us on Ask the Rules Guy on a regular basis. You find us on baseballrulesacademy.com. It's your number one source for rules of the game.